he all in Rainer. And Rainer was pretty <laughs> pissed about it. He's like, why the hell does he say that if he just keeps doing it anyway? He's like, these mind games. And I was just chuckling along. I was like, yeah, you know, it's all part of it. But these are matches that are just so damn good. It doesn't matter if you're a Terran, Protoss, or a Zerg. You got to be excited of this one. And I definitely am. In the bottom right side, we are looking at the main base of the Finnish Phenom. Representing ends, it is Saral. And in the upper left hand side, you of course have our red Zerg player from Clash. It's Raynor. You know, you're watching a special match when all you see are trophies, Wadi. I see trophies <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Trophies to the left, trophies to the right, every, actually everywhere. You're not wrong, Roddy. They got a lot of them between them, don't they? Vader just sent me a picture of the one trophy that's still kind of missing in Serral's cabinet, and that is the Intel Extreme Masters trophy. It's obviously beautiful. And Rainer apparently just received his finally. It took a little while because the first one took some damage. He showed it off. He's like, look at this, look at this. Like, yep, that is a sexy trophy indeed. We know that that's the one thing that Serral still really wants to uh, get his hands on. Because in the eyes of many, Serral is the greatest Starcraft 2 player of all time. You can agree or disagree, that doesn't really matter. He's got a very impressive resume. But the one thing that is missing is that Intel Extreme Masters Katowice. Yep, that's the, that's the major event he just never got his hands on. So, came close. And it's come close a few times, but just not quite close enough. And of course, now to get that trophy, it's really like winning it all. It is our world championships, right? So mm -hmm. he's uh, he's been there before. Just has to find the momentum and the form to do it again, which he's totally capable of. There's just a lot more players out there right now that are also very capable of it. Whereas obviously when he won BlizzCon, he was by far and away just the dominant player back then. Mm -hmm. Yep. It wasn't even like in a way it was a surprise because like oh my god a non-Korean yeah. but if you followed StarCraft throughout the entire year you were not that surprised because he didn't just look great in his games he looked dominant he looked fantastic in pretty much everything he participated in for months leading up to BlizzCon and it was the only outcome that truly made a lot of sense. So far these openings are awfully similar while they have been keeping a close eye on the production tab. We see a bailing nest go down. I am definitely expecting both of these guys to throw one another a couple curveballs. I'm sure we see a couple of hatcheries all in or hatchery tech all ins in this series. I'm not sure if we're going to see that on light shade though. I don't think this map is really all that good for it anymore. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, one of those crazy things when you watch these two players, they both have so many different things to throw at each other. And, you know, that includes all ins, includes melee upgrade opening, spires. And of course, that typical Roach game. But yeah, this one seems to be going in the more standard direction and nothing too aggressive. I mean, a few more links on the way up from Raynor. Typically, one player does make those links first and the other player responds, but it's generally all evens out in a pretty comfortable macro position for both. Mm -hmm. It is important to keep in mind that Saro has kind of all in Raynor. The two times they did meet each other a little over a month ago, one of them was, I believe, in your tournament. The other one was the best of one. Uh, he wasn't super... No, one of them was a TSL qualifier, actually. A TSL qualifier yep. and then uh, the best of one. Yeah, Saro was very aggressive in those games. Raynor wasn't fond of it. it takes a lot... He's getting a lot of damage on this hatchery. I mean, it's impossible to kill it with those safety banelings nearby, but that's quite some damage. Yeah, there's uh, a little bit of damage to go down it. Yeah, they uh, they also played in the next qualifier as well, and Raynor won that one. So it was kind of like... You know, a bit back and forth between them. They both won a best of three so far against each other this year. So I think what was big for Sarah was in the TSL qualifier, actually just breaking the streak because Reynor had won like five yep. series in a row against him. And not just like best of threes, like best of fives as well and best of sevens. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I think, a very important for streak for Sarah to break just mentally, I think, more than anything else. Yep. Now, Reynor, for his own mental sake, can just say that he didn't play those games of the comfort of his own home. <laughs> he, had, he had to play with me around, just a massive distraction. You know me, Wadi, super out of line all the time. So yeah. I think that Reyna can get over it. Reyna obviously took some time off after the Intox Remasters Katowice 2. That's just the way that he likes to do it. Reyna is not a guy that plays each and every single day throughout the year, 20 games in a row, and feels like he needs to do that. No, he likes to enjoy his time off of the game. But then once he starts going at it, he goes hard and he starts playing a lot again. Yep, and that's what you need to, to do. As I was a little interested, Reno was making a lot of roaches initially, but uh, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere. I mean, Tao had roaches too, just not quite in the number that Reyna was building. Yeah, everything looks as though it's going to even out a little bit. Just Tao that a little bit better set up. Lair on the way, plus one missiles much further along. Right, it's still kind of, you know, it almost feels like Reyna wants to go and attack, but I'm not going to really, I'm not really sure what he would be attacking with or, or for, you know, like he does no advantage here. Nope, unless he's waiting for plus one, but obviously, oh, maybe if Cyril starts banking up resources, makes yeah. a lot of extra drones, then the attack that does, yeah, I feel like he's definitely going to fight before his own plus one is done. Well, Cyril will have plus one. It's a bit odd that the one of Raynor is so much later, but Raynor is absolutely sending it here in game one, guys. Not tacking up, not going into a lair. So he's going for one of these attacks that Cyril has used a couple of times against him the last few times they squared off. And... There is a bigger army, but obviously Raynor and his roaches are not going to have speed or something. Not like Cyril's roaches have speed, but he's the one defending, so that matters a bit less. I don't know, is Raynor's army advantage big enough to get the job done here, Wardy? Oh, I, I really don't know. Honestly, with, if I'm being really honest with you, I think it really isn't. Just plus one missiles is such a big deal. The Ling's in the main base, though. That's going to be a problem for Cyril to deal with. So maybe that more than anything else. I mean, I feel like at the front, Cyril's doing just fine. The losing drones behind us still isn't dealing with those Zerglings. I mean, that's definitely affecting him for sure. As you see the spine finishing up for just a moment, the uh, Cross of Bowser doesn't get it done. Now Cyril is being overrun at the front, and wow, this really is just going to work out. And wow, I, I did not see this working at all, if I'm going to be honest with you, but I was very, very wrong. Raynor wasn't planning on ever waiting for plus one missile attacks because he cancelled it. So Raynor going back to some of the builds that brought him a lot of success when he first started building games against Serral. And that is just by confusing the hell out of Serral. Serral can scout all he wants, but if what you see is not actually really what you're going to get, it's difficult to make all the correct calls. It was, I mean, it's difficult even when we could see everything, right? Because I was looking, I was like, well, he made nine roaches, but then he also made like those three or four extra drones. And that's what really made me stop and say, oh, wait a second. Like, is this just going to be him doing some like, you know, it didn't really add up. But then, yeah, it, it was enough. And obviously, Stella's not able to make that re-prepare well enough. And I wonder what it would have looked like with the Lings weren't in the base, though, because I wonder if that just maybe Serral can pay a bit more attention to the front. You never know when that might make the difference, a little bit more consistent mining. Mm -hmm. uh, that definitely obviously is, is one of the big issues there. So, GG's though, well played by Reynal and uh, well attacked. <laughs> yeah, not the most epic game of the day, but it is fun to see the mind games and it's cool to see uh, how much these two guys try to confuse each other. And uh, you know, it's funny because earlier today I uh, had a little chat with Reynal as well as he was showing up his trophy. He, I was like, uh, feeling good going up against Jonah and he's like, I've got I've got the strategies in mind. I know what I want to do. Now, obviously, <laughs> these guys will always make adjustments like based upon what they see. And if Cyril does something wild, then you cannot necessarily go with a certain plan. But it seems like he's really kind of set in stone on how he wants to approach and tackle this best of five. Got the job done here in the first one. Definitely did. We're going to Romanda side for map number two. It's one of the larger ones. Definitely one you don't expect to see those earlier Roach attacks on. Um, but not impossible as well because like you say it's the unexpected that works the best between these two because it kind of just has to be it kind of has to make no sense so uh let the mind games continue into Romanda's side obviously i think a pretty good chance of maybe seeing a melee upgrade here roddy maybe seeing just some straight up muta play uh you know again both these guys can switch it up like that and that's what makes their zvcs just so entertaining to watch Maybe some Nidus's as well. If one of them yeah. does want to go into that spire a little quicker than they should. An odd game one, but here we are in game two. In the top left side, we're looking at the main base of the man who's trailing 0-1 in this best of five. He is representing Ants. It is a saddle. Down in the bottom right hand side, representing Clash, it is Raynor. You know, something that's really stupid to say is something like, Sarah has looked really good lately, because obviously Sarah yeah. has looked good for a very long time. But it did almost feel to me that after he lost a couple series, you know, first, of course, against Raynor and Katowice wasn't exactly what he was hoping for. And then a couple of big losses against Clem, Katowice being one of those. It felt like he went almost even harder than he went before and he started practicing more. And I don't want to say he leveled up, but it definitely felt like it was closer to peak performance Cerro again than I saw a little while ago. I'm with you. It definitely feel... It felt for a while, 
we just had several kind of a bit of a downward trend and not necessarily him on a downward trend as much as everyone else was on an upward trend, right? And that kind of made mm -hmm. it feel like he was doing a bit worse. But yeah, I, I, I'm kind of with you and I think at the end of the day, some things definitely seemed a little bit more serious about Cyril the last couple of times I've been casting where he does look a bit more all around solid again. He does not let those openings appear, which we have been seeing in his gameplay a little bit lately too. So yeah, I can I can see where you're coming from with that. I, I feel kind of the same way. Yeah, I think you phrased it well. Yeah, it's a really dumb thing to say, but in the, the more you think about it, the more you see his recent games compared to the games he was playing, let's say five, six, seven months ago. You're like, does Sarah look better? <laughs> does Sarah <laughs> look good? <laughs> like, well, he always looked good, but... It, it just feels like the package is a bit more complete than it was a little while ago. I'm really excited to see how he's going to do in that TSL that we mentioned before. Obviously, these boys, they squared off in the qualifiers and Cyril did win that one. Yeah, that's coming up after uh, we are done with the DreamHack Starcraft 2 Master Summer. Both of them qualified. There's a chance for more Cyril versus Rainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we, we can get... Uh plenty of great games in that event the, the player lineup's looking great clem in there as well of course it's basically going to be like a bit of a, like a, a dream hack masters uh like dessert, season basically. finals <laughs> yeah <laughs> it is actually kind of right like yeah. yeah all right we have got the bailing nest going down on the side of sarah rainer is going to do the same thing last game it was rainer who made a couple of links uh, a bit earlier which obviously put him in a tiny tiny economic deficit nothing to be too dramatic over now, he applied some pressure, but I think the most important thing is that he didn't just lose the links, right? Because those were the links that created a lot of chaos later on when it just ran into the main base. Yeah, no, the, the links being around, I, I really think that was a very, very key part of that because otherwise, even if it is enough to win without them, it just makes your life that much easier because it's Serral that has to defend that perfectly. Otherwise, the links alone will just, you know, do enough damage to put you in a great position. So it's a bonus for you. So yeah, no, definitely... Worth keeping those alive as Rain Nest is done on either side. And we go up to Evo Chambers. And well, it's a romantic side. Are we really expecting anything too aggressive this early on? Probably not. Nah, this is not that good. The map is a bit too big for it. You know, I was thinking of what you said, where you're like, I didn't really see it work. And who is Rainer is the one who said, okay, both of them are just going to fire up the lair. Three minutes, 50 seconds. You know, Cero, uh, I think. Obviously, he made a lot of drones last game, right? And at one point, he <laughs> dropped the Spire, and then he made those eight or nine extra drones. Well, if he would have just made the units in the Spire or the drones and not the Spire, there is a chance that he could have helped. I think it's the combination of both that yep. kind of killed him. Uh, he did cancel the Spire. I kept a close eye on that while the attack was obviously happening, and, and it was just a bit too late. All the units were in his space already. I think if he would have only done one of those two things, he probably would have been fine because it's the kind of attack that probably shouldn't have worked. And it's just because it shouldn't work that they sometimes work. Yeah, it's the, uh, the annoyance of ZVZ <laughs> and why these builds can be a little bit funky to play against as well. So yeah, no, it's uh, yeah a little bit too greedy out of Sour, right? He needed to get a yeah. bit of a better idea before he committed to it all. He doesn't have to throw that on that spire. doesn't have to build those drones. But I can also understand that if you feel like you're going up as he just kind of does it. Uh, this time it's Rainer. Well, oh, they're both dropping a Spire. Okay. Mm. Well, I haven't seen... I actually can't really recall many Muda versus Muda games between these two. Most of the time it's one going Muda, the other one going to try to kill the, the guy going Muda. Or we end up in the weird Roach Corruptor versus Muda list. I can't really remember them ever playing Muda against Muda. How does it even look like Wardy? Yeah, I remember one game, I feel like, which is maybe Muda vs. Muda on Eternal Empire between them, and it was just utter chaos. And it really was. They were running around everywhere. I think Serral was behind, but clawed it back with, like, Ling run buys. I mean, they're both just quick. They're both just fast, and they're both very active on the map. But very interesting is that Reyno just goes melee upgrade, cancels that for missiles, which was on the way yeah. for quite a while. So he's just going to go fully into kind of Ling Bay Muda. Whereas Serral is still looking to play kind of Muta Roach, so that might lead him with less mm. Mutas. If he knows what's going on, he could also play Corrupt and go for this. timing. Yeah, so... I think that's what it's going to be, mate. I, I, I think Dylan don't think he's going to go Mutas. I'd be so surprised if Serral would build Mutas now, because then I feel like he's just killing himself, and yes. Serral's way too good to do that. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense, because if you want to build Roaches, they cost gas, but so do your Mutas, and then you've got less Mutas, and, you know, I don't need to do the math for you guys, right? Less Mutas is worse than more Mutas, so... The Corruptors give you a timing, though, and you can hit a timing with, like, Corruptors, and there they are. 
it is one of those things which is very kind mm. of short-lived though because if you start to lose the advantage in the skies Corruptors don't get to fall back. They will just die. And then you never get back up there in Crypt Account. And then you have no Mew to answer. And then you just kind of lose. So yep. it's going to be a little tense. I'm with you. In a way, it almost feels like Sarah is going to all in, even though this is a proper three base setup. And we are looking at 66 rounds. But I think you remember game, uh, the game between Sarah and Dark 2 on this map, where they both had an outrageous amount of Sarah mm -hmm. having Corruptors, Dark having like almost 50 Mutalists. And eventually, the Mutalists are just better. You can just do more cool stuff with the Mudas than you can do with the Corruptors. On top of that, this is a very big map, which obviously favors the faster unit composition. Well, I don't need to tell you guys that Lynx and Mudas are a bit faster than Roaches and Corruptors. It feels like Saro is going to turn into the One Punch Man in this game. And that One Punch better not rain or out, otherwise he's in for a world of trouble. Couple of things go by, keep the meters back. The queens are coming as well, so it's going to be a very powerful one single punch. Roddy is going to have everything possible that Cyril can throw at his opponent. Mew's actually going to jump on the Corruptors, and Cyril is a bit unsure about that, and he's taking a bunch of damage, but does get back to the queens. Gets a couple of transfusions, of course, for Raynor. That absolutely solidifies the idea, idea of what's happening here. He knows exactly yep. what's going on. Let's see how he defends as instantly goes in for the counter attack, and 10 work is almost going down. Wow, that went so quick, by the way, those eight yeah. rounds. It almost feels like we missed uh, Banelings, but we really didn't. I love that Rainer even killed one of his own crypto ones just to make it a bit harder for these queens to show up and buy time. I think Rainer can even temporarily give up on this base, but Rainer feels that his army is already good enough as he's got that Spore Crawler helping out and that those Corruptors don't want to fight above the Spore Crawler. And I think this is turning into a disaster for Saro, man. Like, I'm sure a lot of the links have died, but I feel like it's just all taking so long. The queens are starting to run low on energy. The Muda count is still climbing at a very rapid pace. It's now or never, and it's still kind of now, but at the same time, I feel like we're leaning into never with plus one flyer attacks finishing up. Yeah, it's only getting better for Reno, and I feel like Serral on a timer. Reno just lets this base go, right? And then Serral probably has to push up another ramp, and maybe that ain't looking pretty. Six more meters, by the way, about to join in. Now Reno has his own queens joining in, too. These meters are going to get really just involved on everything, going to fly on through and see if it's going to be enough. Serral, I mean, it's kind of impossible to know, isn't it? There's only 12 corruptors on the map. There's 15 meters. Both numbers are dropping on either side. I mean, all the queens are pretty much gone from Saral as the Mutalist count is still looking okay. Probably a couple of reinforcements showing up, and then it's just a question of can you kill these roaches before they get too much done? Yeah, that's almost a big question. I think the Mutas will eventually win the fight, but what if they win the fight and Raynor ends up losing 50 drones? Then obviously it's not good enough. A few more Corruptors are going to show up. This is all so damn close. Raynor's supply is plummeting. He's already lost a lot of drones, and he's still losing drones. Maybe it was good enough with Saro in the end. As, yeah, he's just getting on top of these drones, and Reyna just cannot keep his workers safe. He's going to try to get a few more Zerklings out. But I think the damage has already been dealt, right? You, you know, we weren't really wrong. It was like, you know, it's not going to be enough Corruptors. The Mutas are going to win out, but what we didn't consider, right, is how quickly will that happen? And yeah, it gives these Roaches a ton of time to deal damage. And so now you can just see them continue to run around. These are the last few, but the damage done, you're... 30 workers down and this is a situation where you can actually continue to build corruptors and be competitive yeah. again because you have such an economy advantage it actually is a chance for you to catch back up in the sky armies and so it is one of those rare occurrences where continuing to build corruptors might just work out absolutely and also reina only has one queen now one thing though is that that hatchery did survive now calling this a four base against a three base is not totally fair as reina has 26 rounds and it obviously means he's in a lot of trouble and he even made four more mudas and reina just feels he's too far behind he doesn't want to sing this one out gg Sero gets it done with the roaches queens and corruptors where at first, it looked a bit dicey. Maybe Rainer fought a bit too early because he had so many Mutas on the way all the time and the reinforcements of Serral felt slow. He actually lost a lot of his links in the first exchange already. Yeah, really, really crazy game. I mean, Serral ties it up. It looked as though maybe could have been a Rainer 2-0. That's what we love about these two. The game's always fun. You never really know what's going to happen. We've already had a lot of crazy stuff happen in the ZBZ mode to come after a quick break.
out of romanticide and into 2000 atmospheres game three of several rain or about to begin a map which i think already has a lot of similarities to romanticide right you know larger map lots of bases typically see those macro games on definitely one which could be a contender for mutalisks again and <laughs> maybe something crazy like spire on spire yes but i don't know if we're gonna see too many corruptor yeah. against uh, muda games again they are quite rare especially between these two i think it's funny that the most anticipated series of the day so far is perhaps the most uh, underwhelming when it comes to how epic the games are but it's just because these guys they know how good they are and they don't want to play games being too far behind so they're going for devastating timing attacks that hit very hard and just try to end it because falling behind against either of them is pretty much impossible to turn it around in the bottom left side, we are looking at the main base of the Finnish Phenom himself, representing Enz. It is Saro. And the top right hand side, we do have our little Italian. It is Reno. Not all that little anymore. He's been growing. I know. <laughs> yeah, he's been growing up, hasn't he? You know. I love what you just said there about the, uh, you know, they have to really just do everything and like hit these like big timings. And I always felt like this was something with like, you know, top Koreans and a lot of top Korean games against each other, are, like typically shorter than if you have like European games, because mm -hmm. the top Koreans always like, man, this guy is so good that if I don't just do something so precise and so accurate, you know, I'm just going to die. And so a lot of them do these, you know, games which are much more based around timings rather than the European style of just being like, oh yeah, you know, we'll kind of let this play out, you know, play a macro <laughs> game. Oh, this didn't go so good, but I'll try this. And I always uh, thought it was a fun comparison, and it kind of does come true here, right? You know, they do have to be so deadly, and they do have to just really go all out, and that does lead to sometimes, you know, one guy's trying to do something and set up for the macro game, but the other guy's just gone all out, and, and then the other guy just can't hold on, and hence the games do end up being a bit shorter. Mm -hmm. And you know, one thing I think also comes into play a little bit on how some of these games play out. Like these two are absolutely not enemies. Some people think like, oh, they hate each other. No, they're actually friends. They like to talk with one another. They hang out at events. They've traveled to events together where it kind of felt like it was them against the Koreans. So they are buddies, but they obviously rival uh, rivals as well. And I also have the feeling that they don't want to give the other person in a series the satisfaction of kind of styling on them, right? Because Rainer knows that if Sarah is very far ahead, he can start showing off, he can start multitasking everywhere and he can kind of start picking him apart. And Raynor's got an ego, he doesn't like that. And Sarah also had it with Raynor flying around everywhere, setting up run buys and just destroying his economy while he's trying to scrape every penny together. So I was like, uh-uh, that ain't happening either. And that's also why we're seeing some shorter games between these two, because they just don't want to give the satisfaction to the other guy. It's kind of funny when you think about it, isn't it? It's uh, it's amusing. It's a fun little rivalry to have, that's for sure. That's, yep. uh, and one once again, favorites. it just yeah, and it comes down to just how good these guys are. They know that against a lot of other good players out there that they respect too. That even if they're behind, they know they still have always a trick or two up their sleeves to turn it around. But they also know that falling behind against you know, I whether it's Rain or Sarah, you just don't want to fall behind against either of them because it just becomes so hard. And, yeah, where do you start turning it around when it just feels like the other guy is maybe not playing perfect Starcraft, but something that comes pretty damn close to it. Yeah, absolutely. As we set up with Bane Ness on either side here, there's a faster evolution chamber from Reynor already on the way through as Serral is just going to add on a couple more links while Reynor's building mm. drones. So little difference between the two of them. There's a few Banes well. in from Serral, so maybe he's going to keep on making some links. Yes, he is. And here we go. A feisty start out of our Finnish player. I'm really surprised that Saro has so many banelings. Like, he's morphing these four banelings on the left, and it seems like the banelings that come in from the right side are kind of a distraction. Raynor is trying to set up a counterattack, which means the doors are wide open in the natural. And sure, it's a decent investment, but look at the amount of damage these banelings are already dealing without even blowing up in the first place. Oh my goodness, there's not even a queen in this main base, so these banes are just going to run all the way through, and that's another mineral line now, not mining. <laughs> They're just running around. They're obviously going to have to turn onto some drones now before they actually go down. Going to try and get back to the oh, low ground, no. which they will, and they were actually going to connect on a decent number of drones. Four workers and all of that lost mining time. 
Yep, and that is already being displayed in the work account at this point. Sarah was the one who invested in those six bailings a bit early. He's got defensive bailings too on his side of the map, but he's still the one who's got a worker advantage. Yeah, Raynor trying to counterattack while he thought it was just the two bailings coming in from the right side. That was just the wrong call because those four bailings, they really it may not feel like they did a lot because in the end it was only between brackets four drones. But the, the amount of lost mining time is uh, something to hard to be uh, to be okay with if you're Rainer. Yeah, no, it really is. It's uh, really, really tough as we continue through then. And it's just going to be tough, right? I mean, little things like that, which, you know, it's obviously not a little thing, right? But especially when we've just been having this whole discussion of just how good they are and, you know, getting back from being behind is so difficult. You know, now it just really amplifies just how meaningful that damage is for Serral. Rainer is going to all in this game, isn't he? He's not going to go up to a lair. Yeah. I mean, he does have a, a crap ton of drones. This is like one of these uh, Ling Ravager compositions. Uh, Saro is the one firing up plus one melee and dropping a spire. Does Saro not have any... Okay, Saro gets into the main base. Rainer starts a lair, but I'm not sure if Saro's buying it. I mean, so far he kind of is. He is buying mm. it. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised because... Well, it's just kind of, you know, it seems so obvious, right? But... <laughs> Yeah, okay. He's going to buy for the moment. He starts up road speed as well, Cyril, so he's really continuing to invest into a whole bunch of stuff which just will not defend against this incoming road link setup. Oh, Cyril's in a bit of trouble. Counterattacks might help, but that obviously does mean less units back at home as well, so this works in two different ways. As oh. I'll keep on making Ling's nice bin connection to start, though. Yep, Rainer can be having that because Rainer is very all in and he does have the army advantage. Serral now knows what time it is as he fires up four or five spine crawlers in his natural. But even just losing the third is bad. While this two was going on, the two banelings of Serral found five drones. So that's obviously nice and Serral wants to jump on this opportunity immediately to get on top of these roaches. That's not gonna work as Rainer and his banelings show up in time to keep him safe. But these spines are close to finishing up. What does Serral really have behind it? It seems like he wants to wait and spend his resources and just get all the mutas out is it gonna work Marty? uh i mean it's gonna be really tough right i love that the spines get to finish though and the queen's transfusing by in time he's picking off roaches with re uh, with the lings as well to so stop on reinforcements so maybe 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 because obviously reno doesn't have a lot of tech behind this so even if you take a bunch of damages serral does a very good chance the mutas just end up going across the map and winning even if you do take a lot of damage on this third base there's 30 mutas on the way roddy that isn't just like the initial seven or eight trailing in. That's a lot of meters to have all at once. I think they're going to have a sizable effect on this game. Yep, <laughs> the drones are in a very oh, awkward no. spot, but they have avoided the bailings for now. Actually, <laughs> but they're going to run into all the roaches, so a lot of these uh... roaches are still going to fall. Yeah, this is going to be an awkward game for Rainer now, of course, too, because he doesn't have that much NPR. I kind of love that he waited a little bit with dropping the spores, just because he knew that Sarah was going to be forced to keep these Mutas at home defensively. So it's not just the base, it's also 20 drones. But it's still a lot of Mutas out, plus one melee is done already. It's a lot of damage that Rainer dealt, but I don't know if it's the game-ending damage that he was looking for. Yeah, it feels great for Rainer, right? He killed a hatch, right, and he put Sarah very far behind. But you've got to respect the Mutalists and what they can do and the amount of value that they bring to the table here for Serral can really allow him to play catch up from this position. So that's why you're not kind of too worried about Serral's position just yet, or you shouldn't be. You're going to see these Mutalists going across. Obviously, the spores are well set up and Reno's investing into a good amount of spores. And of Links. course, constant counterattacks are perfect to keep this base cancelled. Them spines can't burrow yet. Oh, that's so smart by Raynor. He knows that the best defense is offense. This is such a massive cancel. He even gets the drone tool. Saro is trying to do a Jadong move here and splitting his mutas up. He knows that he can't just be sitting at home defending because then the fact that he's on two bases does become very problematic. But he was just a little bit too late. He saw it with the Overlord. And you know what we can also mention is that after all of this took place in the early game, Raynor immediately fired up plus one melee. And he's like, all right, let's do this then, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna just keep your Mutas busy with my Zerglings. A few more Zerglings are looking for another cancel. And if they get the cancel again, this would be devastating for Serral. Yeah, oh. obviously one of the big things here, Serral's Lings run in. It is a cancel against that delay continues. I was gonna say one of the big things is obviously just even production, right? You don't have as much lava because you're down the hatchery as Serral. So it's something else to keep in mind, although he is continuing to do very well, cleaning up a few more Lings. Mm-hmm. The spore crawl account is very high. We've got triple spore. 
in the main base in the third and I think double spore in the natural where obviously the queens can help out too. The queen count is also not that queen count of the early game anymore. I'm like, well, that's 11 queens. We have an infestation pit going down. I think that's for Infestus or is he just mm. going to go up to Hive Tech? Yeah, I, I don't know. Well, it's kind of tough to call, right? Maybe you just go Hive and get a couple of Vipers out. I think that might not be a bad bad idea. We actually see Lurgan down an infestation pit from Serral, so he's pretty sure about where he wants to take this. But right now, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, either is not a bad choice, but I think I like the Hive a bit more. I think the Vipers are reliable damage on those mm -hmm. booters. Whereas the Infestors are a little bit more hit and miss, and I don't know if Reynold just really has anything to capitalize if he hits a good fungal. <laughs> Reynold needs to be careful with his Zerglings. This time, Sarah is ready. Left a couple of Veilings behind, so that Hatchery will finally go up. I'm gonna say I'm very impressed with the way that Reynold has played this EVZ in the last three minutes, because at first I'm like, yeah, that's nice and all. And when he got the drones, I'm like, okay, now it's like somewhat decent. But no, Sarah makes an uncharacteristic misclick, excuse, excuse me, Observer, in the center of the map. Raynor sent all of his Zerglings, several split off one Bailing, wants to connect this one Bailing, and then blew up seven other Bailings far away from the fight. So he just detonated all of them while he was busy dealing with that Zergling counterattack. I mean, I don't know if the Bailings really would have done that much, but it's not a feels good moment. No, definitely, definitely not. You want to avoid stuff like that. I do feel good for Serral at least getting up to Lurkers though, right? Because it kind of feels at least then he's going to stop Reynold from being able to do as much attacking. And he's actually going to find the spawning pool here. And obviously the majority of Reynold's attack have focused around Lings. And what else does really Reynold have, right? He's got kind of on his way towards... Oh, well, nothing really, right? Like Ultras, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, Lings are still really a key part of this. Yep, Reynold's Ling upgrades are going to be feisty though. He already has plus two Caraphase and plus two Melees on the way. Mm. I want to say Sarah needs to be careful with the Mudas, but it's not like Rainer really has anything to kill all these Mudas immediately. Yeah, getting getting up to Lurkers is one thing. Uh, I, I just think as long as Rainer gets Vipers out and he starts using the Viper energy immediately, he should be fine, though. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with you, right? Because the moment the Parasite Bombs just start coming down, these Mudas become way weaker and they just can't stick around or have the longevity that they've been having so far. They can't be as active. He's going to dive the main base where he will find, what, a Spore Crawl? He'll probably get this Queen as well. Costume you Muta, though. He's going to go for the Hive, but there's just there's yeah. no way that actually becomes meaningful. He gets an Overlord, though, and that's a Supply Block, and well, there's seven more Overlords on the way, so I guess not that meaningful just yet. Big Bane run by, but there's a couple of Banes here, so he got to split a couple of heads. Got to be careful with this, but he is going to get a few drones out of it. He's actually going to get a bunch more at the end, as they didn't really keep on going. Look on the left side. Continue down. Left side of the third base. Drop a lord. <laughs> <laughs> the <s> oh my god. <laughs> the drop a lords are a little less effective without overlord speed, guys. <laughs> yeah, you even Cell can't quite make that work, believe it or not. How that would be some are these overlords. They're very slow. <laughs> And uh, Reynold's maxed, and I feel like the instant he gets maxed, he's just like, you know what, let's go. Bring my queens, ultras are coming. Do you think yep. the lurkers of Serral can hold this off? Because that's what he's been relying on. That's, that was his plan. That was his setup. Uh, seven lurkers is not enough. And let's not forget, it's not about the parasitic bombs alone. As uh, one of the vipers, actually one or two vipers, I believe. The two vipers yeah, did go down. down. That's kind of bad. But yeah, the lurker count is not high enough. And you have only seven lurkers. You can't possibly have your lurkers always in the right place. So took a lot of damage there. Look at how low on HP all these Mudas are. Oh. I feel so bad when the Ultra just gets back in a transfuse range as well before going down. 17 drones dead and Serral. I mean, let's see if you can find something. It's really down to the Lurkers. How many Lurkers does he have? He's got 11 of them. Oh, it's something, but I'm not super confident. With that many transfusions, these Ultras are going to feel unkillable. Raynor actually using his Banelings there on the rocks. What's funny as well is that Raynor has so many links and has had quite a few Banelings too. He's making seven more Banelings. Raynor forgot Baneling speed, buddy. Oh, wow. That's, uh, yeah, that's something you would like to have, actually. A lot of Lurkers are here. Now, let's not forget that Serral did get on top of the Vipers. Is there enough firepower in these Lurkers to keep the Ultras at bay? At first, it feels like the answer is yes. Then the answer is no, because all the Queens show up. And it seems that these Ultras don't have 500 HP, but they've got 5,000 HP. And I feel like they're just not going to fall. Serral's trying to make some magic happen with a couple of Zerglings in the top right side. But his army of Raynor, it just kind of feels unstoppable. 
It really, really does. The Mews are going to try and fight the Queens, which in Fens have spent a lot of their transfusions, but still enough to keep each other alive. And Serral's supply keeps on dropping down. Good counterattack by Serral, but just too little too late. Uh, what a great game from Reno. I think yeah. Serral really had a chance to maybe make something happen with the Muta count after that initial attack. But Reno did everything so well. And canceling that third base so many times mm. really probably was the difference. And what was otherwise, you know, this wasn't a far, you know, this wasn't an unimaginable win for Serral, right? We could see Not ways in which this could work out. So the importance of keeping that base down for so long really just paid dividends to Reno. I can only echo everything you just said. I completely agree. I don't think it's the Roaches and Ling attack that won him the game. I think it's the fact that he got a double cancel on the third base. And of course, getting all those drones at the first attack, that was nice. You know, otherwise then those drones are already long distance mining and they're still adding some value. But it's the value that Raynor got as the Queens are kind of by themselves in the center of the map. Maybe the Mutas feel like this is their moment, but the Vipers are back for seconds. They've got plenty of energy for more Parasitic Bomb. And I think Saron knows that this is an impossible game to win at this point. Yep, no, I'm with you. I mean, a couple of veins going to go rolling by here and just going to aim for a couple of those drones. And again, five. I mean, that's decent, but you just need so much more than this. This game is long past a couple of workers being killed off. And Reno is ready to go again. Queens have energy. Transfusions are back on the menu for these Ultralisks. And they are going to feel unkillable once more, even with, I mean, a new round of lurkers, but no more than there were last time. As Reno is maxed out and ready to take the lead in this series. The Vipers are just so good. I wouldn't even mind it if Reno, instead of three, has like five or six Vipers, right? Because they're good in everything. Blinding Cloud is great. Abduct is great. Parasitic Bomb to finally kill these Munos. Also great. Reno needs to be a little bit careful here, but I guess he still does have good in there. More than enough amazing split on the middle is that was affected by Parasitic wow. Bomb. I don't even know how you do those things, Serral. And he actually kind of pushes his army back. Wow. The Queens were very slow. I mean, it, this is such a heroic effort by Serral. I'm afraid that this is all not going to matter in the end. As, well, unless Rainer loses all of his Queens now for no reason. Yeah. How the hell did he select that Muda so quickly, Wadi? Man, it's like that clip when he did it. You remember the yeah. clip that, that went well, around? Evergreen. It was like... Yeah, it was exactly that. It was it was just out of that. It's like he knew which one was targeted before it was targeted. And it's in a big flock of meters. How do you do that? I don't you know. You don't. You don't. Yeah. Only yeah. Sarah. Unfortunately, it's not going to make the difference unless a fight like that happens a few more times. You remember I said I wouldn't mind it if Rainer just gets five Vipers. That's why he's yeah. getting five Vipers now. There's this, Cero doesn't have an answer for all these Vipers. So at this point, even six or seven, I know that it may seem like overkill at that point, but it's not bad because every single spell is just cash money. I mean, yeah, he went up to six Vipers now. Just start abducting. You don't have to run into a concave of 12 Lurkers if you can just abduct them one by one. And because Sarah was so far behind in this game, all he can do there is just sit and watch how his units are going to get picked off. Reno just keeps taking those bases through the top slides. The Muta's showing up and picking away at a couple more of the Zerglings again, which are going to get back towards the Ultras and the Queens. Look, it's pouring out here from several twos. Just more of those coming out. Splits away the Muta's. Again, pass a bomb wasn't quite as epic as the first split away. No, I don't. <laughs> first one was so good. Now that Mutas do get on top of all these Ultras, and the Ultras can't really fight back. This feels a little bit like Void Race chasing Zerglings, where it's like, well, you know. <laughs> We are making a difference. This is maybe not happening at the pace we'd like to see it happen. Where are the Vipers? That's basically a big question. Reina needs to make sure he doesn't let these Mudos get on top of the Vipers again without you know, any sort of anti-air support. Here is that first Viper. Reina still doesn't have Baning speed, by the way, which is a little bit silly because that man has made a lot of Banings this game, Wadi. Yeah, I know. It was when he was walking into that last fight, and I was like, wait, this Bayman still don't have Bane speed? Like, I knew he didn't have it initially, but I thought by now he would have just added it on there. Awesome. It was a Ducks we were talking about, and Queens take a while to kill a Lurker, but they do get the job done. Yeah, the abducts are absolutely just the answer, right? Instead of just running head first in with these ultras, although Ooh. my goodness, those ultras are melting, Roddy! They need some transfusions ASAP, and they finally get them, but a few roaches making the difference here. And Serral still held back the three bases, fourth kill the game, but I've been finding some value. As, uh, there's a couple of abducts, and it just feels like they were missing for a long time in that fight. Yeah, Reyna could have done that a bit sooner. Serral was counterattacking with the Mudas. And Reyna actually dropped the Parasitic Bomb in the Muda, so they're all very low in HP. These Ultras are starting to fall, but Reyna is just super far ahead, guys. Economically, 
it's not a fair fight. Cero's making the absolute best of this game, and like I said before, I really think it's been a heroic effort coming out of the Finnish Phenom. But it's just not going to be enough, because some fights are just not fair. And this is kind of one of them, even though Cero is going to be able to clean up all the queens now, too. I'm sure that Rainer for his pushing is like, let's just hope you don't have a hidden base or something, Valve. Well, we know he yeah. doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those scenarios where Reynold might be like, how are you still alive? Reynolds Remax, five queens at once, seven ultras. You already made a bunch of lings as well on top of that, so... He's gonna have plenty in a game. Mutas alone just aren't gonna be able to get the job done. Cell just can't afford anything more. He's gonna try and chase units down. He's gonna try and make something of this, but... Uh, heroic effort's a great way to describe this game because Cell has been trailing for a very long time and he has done anything and everything possible to at least make it somewhat competitive. It's just not been enough in the end, and Reynold will retake the lead of his series maybe just a few minutes later than we originally thought it would be. Yep, was far ahead, but definitely had some troubles closing it out just because Cero's defenses were pretty amazing. The Lurker is obviously always a hard unit to break, uh, but Cero really making the best of oh, very little in the last few minutes of that game. Can only go back to what you already said in the game, Wadi. Those Zerglings, the follow-up links, they got not one, but two cancels, and I think the drone kill too on the third hatchery. That's the phase in the game where Sarah's supposed to completely even things up, find some damage with the Munas, pick off Overlords, keep Raynor in the dark. That's not the phase in the game where Raynor is still able to gain a three or even a four base advantage over the two initial bases that Sarah got up with his fire. Those links won Raynor the game. Yeah, they really did. They set up the, uh, the rest of the story, unfortunately, for Sarah. It was, uh, yeah, Heroic effort it was really, really good. It was really, really much closer than I think a lot of people would have made it uh, after Reynold canceled that third base a whole bunch of times, but it was just the difference. We're going to get ourselves a Jaganatha for map four, and if we get to map five, as we've done so many times today, Roddy, mm. we will go to Beckett Industries as well. So a fun couple of maps still to come. Jaganatha, especially that mix of like a shorter map with the acceleration zones. Units move across those pretty quick. But also, you know, it's not a bad map for the Mutalisks either as well. And we've obviously started to see our fair share of these in the series. So, excited to see what Serral pulls out, especially because obviously he has got to go and put everything on the line now. Lose this, and you're down in that lower bracket. Yep, and that's not where you want to be, especially not having to go up against Lambo, who has been playing some tremendous StarCraft over the last few months. It's definitely, for me, a blast of the past, this series, that is. Because yeah. Raynor is back to basically being up to no good. He's playing cheeky, naughty, call it how you want it. But he's doing anything but playing a regular ZVZ. On the other hand, Sarah also kind of started this a while ago. And Sarah was the one on leading Raynor a couple of times. But all that Raynor wanted to do was build a couple of roaches and maybe get a Spire up and take the game from there. But now it's just, uh, this is not your standard ZVZ series. It's Raynor and Sarah just trying to outsmart each other and trying to outlevel each other in many different ways. Absolutely, as we will be hopefully just a few moments. Rain will just need a moment or so before we get this started up. Fun, fun series, right? I feel like we finally had a, a game as well where I know it wasn't maybe super close and back and forth like the earlier PVZs, but it was a little bit longer, you know, than the than the couple of first games which were a little faster. You know what's funny though is that we get spoiled very quickly as StarCraft 2 fans, Water, because yeah. when we cast those first two best of fives of the day, we're like, sick, StarCraft's awesome, but you can't really expect. It's like football, you know, not every game is a 4-3. There's always a couple zero zeros in the mix or a good old 1-0. A couple of those PVCs were spectacular, but I definitely think this series has been fun and interesting. And we also know that this is just not the last time that these two are going to play against each other. And it feels like this is just a page of a chapter of a book. Because <laughs> that's how often they're going to play against each other in big moments. In the top right side, we are looking at the main base of the Finnish Phenom himself. He's down 1-2, but played pretty damn solid from far behind in game 3. It is Saro. Down in the bottom left-hand side, can he finish this series off without a game 5? It's Reynor. So far, all my predictions have been wrong today, but what I did get correct is that it was going to be 3-2. Now, I predicted a 3-2 in favor of Raynor, so everybody that believes in the Serral comeback, start feeling pretty good about it if that trend continues. Hmm. Yeah. 
That's uh, that's true. That's true. Pick max packs three two. Lost two three. Pick chill time <laughs> three two. Lost two three. <laughs> Sarah's got it, mate. Congrats, Yona. <laughs> wait, wait. I feel like we threw that threw our predictions out the window a long time ago. Me and you <laughs> in this DreamHack event. Yeah, no, I tried one day, but the moment when Jim Rising started winning two maps against Special, I mentally tapped out, mate. I was like, that's it for the prediction game. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Too far behind to recover. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I feel you. That was a brutal day as well. It's just like, how do you even begin to think that would happen? It's uh, really crazy. Yeah, Latin America was actually kind of fun this season, especially with Era getting the big top set over Kalazur. I mean, it makes me sad for Diego, but it's just cool for the region that it's finally a different grand final. Maybe it wasn't the best grand final ever, but it's just good to see a new name up there. It was good to see a new name up there. I feel like Latin America needed a bit of a mix up, you know? It's nice to see it, you know, because next season now we can be like, you know, we don't have to just be like, it's the big three. There's a bit more of a story to tell, so. I think that's really cool. I'm with you. So far, everything is standard here on Jagannatha. Two minutes into the game, both players have expanded the way they shoot. They've been mining gas the way they shoot. Let's not forget that last game started off a bit wild with Serol not making just two aggressive banelings on the other side of the map, but six banelings. Two banelings is a distraction maneuver. Four banelings that casually made their way into the natural, into the main. And then they kind of just figured out what do we want to explode on today? <laughs> they could have picked any one of those runs, Wadi. They could have picked any of them. That was actually a really crazy start, wasn't it? Just uh, Bane's waddling around as a couple lings. Here, do go running on by. Serral, not going to commit them in, just going to keep them alive, bring them back. Just wanted to look, guess to see the Bane nest on the way up here. So a good little confirmation of what is going on. So many just mind games between these two that obviously we can't possibly inform you guys at home about. But yeah. I'm sure that they are always thinking of the last time they played on this specific map. I mean, I think Sarah went for that Roachling attack while Raynor tried to go up to the Spire. And then they're obviously, yeah, this could happen again, but then X, Y, Z, and there are so many variables that they have to keep in mind. At the end of the day, all they can really do is just scout and try to figure it out. But we saw it in the first game. We see everything, and it was even confusing to us what Reyna was doing. How the hell yeah. is Serral supposed to always make the correct calls in the heat of the moment? It's extremely difficult, and that's what makes this, this high-level play so impressive, right? You know, you don't have to have this epic set of battles every single time on the map to, you know, appreciate and be kind of in awe at how the guys are playing, right? Well, the time it is those just decisions that are so cool to see is Rotron starts up on either side, and we continue into... Roach on Roach, which is something we've not seen a lot of. Well, I feel like Raynor is trying to make it seem like he wants it, but he's already taking a lot of extra extractors. Obviously, plus one missile attacks is on the way. Saro is scouting with a happy little zergling in the bottom side of the map. Now takes his own extractors and starts his own lair, but it's a little bit later than these extractors of Raynor. Yeah, definitely. Not wrong there is that one Ling just sneaks around again. It's going so important for these guys, so it will not be allowed in. Again, at the front, it reads like roaches, but it's everything you see behind that and everything that goes on behind the scenes that makes it so, so difficult to truly know what's going on. Serral's even going to build Overlord Speed, which at this stage, I don't blame him, right? <laughs> what better way to actually figure out what's happening? Mm -hmm. It took Raynor a little while to saturate these extractors, so I'm starting to feel a little bit better about roaches, but now he's also taking the gas in the main. Never mind, he's going up to six gases. Are we going to yep. drop a Spire, Mr. Raynor? Because that's definitely what it's starting to feel like to me. There it that's is. a lot of gas. It would make a lot of sense to drop a spy as he does. I mean, just too much gas to really do anything else with, right? At some point, no. there is enough ravages when you're playing roaches. So <laughs> nice scout from Sarah, though. Pretty quickly, and again, just one link all yeah. the time keeping up info. So he gets a pretty good read himself. And that's now got to be a possibility on his mind. Uh, yes. On the other end, he's also probably thinking that damn kid has been tricking me all series long. You know, is he actually mm. going for his fire this game? Or do I need to build roaches now in case he's going to do a roach attack again? Because at the same time, he's also seeing that Rainer tries to go up to four bases. Overseer, though, is going to give the confirmation to Yona. But I feel like it's a little bit late. I don't... Well, Spire is like 65% done. Discern, like, Roach Speed isn't done yet, buddy. What, what can Serra really do other than turtle this game? Because I think any attack is just going to show up a bit too late. 
Yeah, oh, I don't no. think anything aggressively works out. Fourth base gets cancelled. And just That's rebuild bad. right away. Yep. That's actually really bad when you go up against Mudas, though. Yeah, because now you can't control that fourth base, right? So mm -hmm. it's really difficult to take control of it, you know, because now the Mutas are going to be out and there's not going to be creep there, etc. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough. I think there are Zerg players that will tell you that if so, if you're in this situation that Saro's currently in, you're just kind of dead. There's really not that much you can do because he made all these roaches just in case Raynor was going to attack him again and he didn't want to die to some weird aggression. So you make all these roaches that are in a way safety roaches. Uh, can't really get much use out of them. You're like, all right, well, at least I can go up to four bases immediately, which is normally the most complicated part of playing against a Muta player. Now even that is going to be a bit hard. As Raynor is making only seven roach. He's done this before. They actually did this. He did this on the Eternal Empire as well, where it's like seven roaches or seven to eight Mudas makes it seem like it's Mudas. Then you're gonna force out the infestation pit. You're gonna force out a lot of spore crawlers. You're gonna force out infestors. And then you blink twice, Wardy. Okay, keep it in mind. Not once, but twice. Bam, Raynor is maxed out. Attacks you with a million roaches and ravages. And you're sitting there with nine spore crawlers and two very sad infestors and knife tech on the way. Raynor has done this before and it worked in a flawless way. I think it's working again. Uh, I blinked once. I'm holding back my second blink just a little while to give Raynor the <laughs> chance to max out, Roddy. <laughs> Yeah, this this is definitely looking good. I mean, Cyril's doing all of the things all of a sudden. They'll be like, yeah, I'm going to deal with these mutas, but does that do anything to help him against the roaches? No, it, it really doesn't. Uh, now Cyril sees it, and Cyril will obviously have flashbacks of that game on Eternal Empire, where the game deciding fight took place at the fourth base. And this is it, man. Cyril made eight spore crawlers that feel like they are useless. He does have a lot of roaches. Maybe a fungal or two can make the difference. Maybe Reyna did not expect Sarah to scout it so quickly. A lot of drones are going down to a couple of veinings at the third. So even if this roach attack doesn't kill Sarah, the economic damage has already been dealt, buddy. Yeah, there's a lot of damage already done. It kind of feels as though you can see Sarah on the camera already knows it is over. As Reyna is going to get the win. 3-1, to one. we don't go to a game 5 for the first time today.